You'll be pleased to hear that this is the non-technical bit. You're, the master class it will really kick off in about half an hour. But so this is the this is the ground setting half an hour to bring everybody up to speed on what we believe to be cloud computing. There's a lot of frankly rubbish talked about cloud computing, and I think the reason why everybody's here is to have a healthy discussion about the implications of what's true, what's not. Um, and to, to reiterate the, the comments, please, if you've got any questions, if anything doesn't make any sense, or frankly, if you disagree with anything that's being presented here, just you know, interrupt. It's far more productive for everybody if, uh, if this is interactive rather than you know, just being, boring you to death with, uh, with PowerPoint, which we hope we're not going to do. Um, my name is Richard Quine. I'm one of the product directors at InTechnology. InTechnology has been around for about 28 years the, as a managed service provider. Um, we were doing cloud a long time before it became called cloud. Um, and um, I look after the, uh, the communication services, the, the cloud-based com communication services service that we do. So what is cloud computing? Um, there's a lot of people that say that cloud computing is around the internet, it's around utility-based charging, it's around web-based interfaces, it's all that type of stuff. That, those are attributes of many cloud services, but that's not what defines cloud computing. The cloud is simply the network. It's not necessarily the internet. If you're running a, um, a secure infrastructure, you may want to use an MPLS infrastructure. You don't have to use the internet. And a lot of people think that the, the cloud is just, you know, um, it's just consumer-based uh, hosted services. So it just means that the IT infrastructure is based in the network as opposed to uh, at one of your offices. And computing is a general service for IT services. And when we look into a little bit more detail, it's effectively anything that you do that could be delivered over a wire. So that's effectively what cloud computing is. It's just IT services that are in the network to, um, as opposed to in your, in your office. So instead of you needing a data center where all of the services are delivered here, and we, we, this is all quite familiar, you've got remote sites uh, and they access the services um, over VPNs or at least lines. Those services then move into the network and people access them from the network. The services themselves are identical to what you're offering today, but they're delivered from a service provider infrastructure within the network as opposed to, as opposed to your services. Is it new? Of course not. Um, web hosting has been around for a very long time and arguably it's the first cloud computing services. Companies like InTechnology have been offering cloud um, network-based managed services for many years uh, and cloud computing is the, is the umbrella term for the movement of our enterprise services from premise-based infrastructure into a uh, service provider. What is new is this growing and widespread acceptance. I swear, if we'd had this session five years ago, this room would be mostly empty because people would perceive cloud computing to be not relevant to them, maybe insecure, not mature enough. The fact that we've got the caliber of the people in this room and you know, the, the ongoing Cloud Circle events is testament to the acceptance that cloud computing has uh, among uh, enterprises and corporates. The problem with a new terminology like cloud computing is that there's been an explosion of acronyms, um, which frankly aren't helpful. Um, I've listed some of these here. All of them are unpronounceable. Um, I won't even begin to work out how you pronounce infrastructure as a service. Um, but you only need to worry about two. This is my view, but this is basically looking at, trying to look behind a little bit the hype of what all the vendors are saying. There are two types of cloud services that you need to worry about. One is platform as a service, and one is software as a service. Platform as a service is where the service provider provides you with a server infrastructure for you to run your applications on. So that's the data centers, the servers, the storage, the operating systems, the backups, all that type of thing. But you put your applications on top of it. Software as a service is where the managed service provider provides everything. SaaS is possibly the one that people are more familiar with, but PaaS is one that's possibly more relevant to, to many of you in this room here. If you look at the way an application stack is traditionally built. You know, you've got your physical infrastructure at the bottom, the computer in the network, all the way up to the application data. If you look what platform as a service does, the service provider looks after this bit at the bottom here. So they will provide all of the, effectively, the heavy lifting, the infrastructure, the, the infrastructure maintenance that, to be honest, isn't an enormous value add to your business, but you just need to do it because the bit that you're particularly interested in is the bit at the top. That's the applications and the data, the, the services that you provide to your end users. The second model is software as a service, and this is where 
The entire application is provided for you. Uh, Net Documents is a great example, and obviously we'll be hearing a little bit more <coughs> later, where the, the entire application is provided for you as a utility over the wire, and all of those components are managed for you by the service provider. So of all the different acronyms in cloud computing, those are basically the main two. Everything else pretty much falls into one of those two. So infrastructure as a service, this is pretty much interchangeable with platform as a service. I haven't managed to find a clear distinction between the two. Arguably, infrastructure is possibly slightly lower level, but um, you'll find vendors moving, uh, switching them between the two. Communications as a service, uh, which is actually my bag, um, hosted IP telephony, but when you look at a lot of people now, is that they see telephony as actually just an application, not, actually, not something that's distinctly different to anything else. So that's really could be part of uh, software as a service. Desktop as a service, which is hosted desktops. Hardware as a service, which in my view isn't cloud, it's hardware leasing. It's just, they just like to put the AAS at the end of stuff. And network as a service, which has been around for a very long time, you know, uh, VPNs. These are examples of platform as a service, and hopefully that most of these are familiar with you. Um, of all of these, all of these are actually service providers. VMware obviously isn't a service provider, but there are lots of um, uh, companies that are offering uh, hosted virtual servers and VMware. Um, all, what all of these companies do is they allow you to have the infrastructure that you can flex on demand, so you can add storage, CPU, um, number of servers. Um, very, very popular with web hosting organizations where flexibility is, uh, is important and you just don't really know what the demand's going to be. Oops. I don't know what happened there. Uh, software as a service is the one that, if you, if you, if you do a quick Google for, um, or Bing, I'm not Google-centric, um, for uh, cloud computing, they'll always come up with software as a service. This is just one part of cloud computing, but it's obviously a significant part. Uh, the, the biggest one is salesforce.com. Um, I think they turned over about $1.7 billion last year. So as a, as a testament that this market is mature, um, you know, Salesforce.com is up there. Net Documents, another um, fantastic example of where the combination of the application with the infrastructure and the flexibility uh, just lends itself perfectly to this. And then you've got organizations, you've got the, the battle between the 800 pound gorillas at the top there, between Office 365 and Google Apps. Um, and then uh, just standard HR internal applications. You know, it's, it's not, most people now use expenses and HR payroll, they're SaaS. We all use them. You know, whether they're called SaaS or not, but the, the idea of actually running your own expense system in-house, maybe you do, but there are lots of companies out there that you can actually do it on, on a rental basis. But does any of this make any difference? Um, one of our customers is uh, Giles Insurance. Um, pretty big uh, independent broker. They have, um, as you can see here, 75 million pound turnover and 40 offices around the UK. This is the way that they have built their IT infrastructure. This is, it's important to say that they haven't actually outsourced anything. What they've done is that everything that they consider to be non-core, they take as a, man, as, as, as a cloud service. So, uh, and it's not just in technology, they, they use um, uh, email and, and email security from other parties. But what they do is they manage suppliers. So they take data centers, networks, telephony, co-location, backup, and they provide that as a cloud services. Uh, same with the um, email and uh, email security over there. That goes over the network, and then it's delivered to site over wire. So the only thing that is on site is a small wise box uh, with a terminal and a screen, and everything is delivered from the, from the cloud. The benefit to cloud is that these four gentlemen here support 1,000 users and 40 officers. They can, when they... Because of the nature of their business, and the, the reason why Giles is quite important is that they're a heavy regulated industry. So they've had to deal with a lot of the issues that are being discussed today. And uh, Richard Corner, who is the, um, the Group Operations Director, said, you shouldn't let regulations determine your IT strategy. The, f the first, first and most important thing to do is that you are, they are Giles, the insurance, the business, and then IT needs to support that. With this infrastructure, they can... Um, acquire and open new offices and bring them online within 24 hours. As soon as the network's gone in, they can actually light up the office within 24 hours. It used to be five days, and they never visit site because everything's now done centrally. And to them, this is what the benefit of, uh, of cloud computing is. So in summary, cloud computing is IT infrastructure as a utility, so you just pay for what you use. It supports both bespoke applications through PaaS, 
but there's a lot of applications to use, particularly desktop productivity applications, which can be easily delivered as SaaS. And you know, email is, is, is the classic one for that. Um, and our view is that if you intelligently use cloud, not blindly, but if you intelligently use it where it's appropriate, it can significantly improve your ability to respond while using much less resources internally to do so. so you can actually focus your expensive IT resources on the things that, things that, that count. All right. I told you I'd try to keep it short and sweet.